In this question, we have to calculate the mean lifetime of a pi meson as measured by an observer on Earth. And we are given two pieces of information to do that. We know the proper lifetime, which we will discuss shortly, is this very brief time interval. And then we know the speed of the pi meson is 98% of the speed of light. One of the trickiest aspects of answering these time dilation questions is understanding the difference between the proper time interval and then just this time interval delta t. So let's begin to talk about that. We've drawn a goofy little picture of an individual on Earth observing the pi meson whizzing by. And the question gave us that time interval. And we have to decide if that's the delta TP versus the delta T. And what you want to do is you want to try to ask yourself which object is actually moving relative to the clock or moving with respect to the clock. And these can be a little confusing because the pi meson is certainly moving. So a lot of students would think that the pi meson is moving with respect to the clock, but in fact it isn't. We have put a little clock next to the pi meson. We imagine that it's kind of holding onto that clock. And as the pi meson whizzes by the observer on Earth, you must ask yourself, is the clock moving relative to the pi meson? And the answer is no, the clock is not moving relative to the pi meson. We know it's not moving relative to the pi meson because this little distance, let's say, between the pi meson and the clock isn't changing. And if that distance isn't changing, then they are at rest relative to each other. But in fact, the observer back here on Earth is moving relative to the clock because the distance between that person and the clock is growing as the clock zooms past the person. So because that distance between the clock and the person is increasing, then we would know that they're moving relative to each other. So when we have identified the object that is moving with respect to the clock, we label that time interval delta t. And when we've identified the object that is at rest with respect to the clock, we label that time interval delta t p. So it's very important to get those two times straight. But once we've done so, we can apply the time dilation equation. So we're going to go over here and we're going to snag it and we're going to copy paste it and start plugging in some values here. And so here we go. Again, we're calculating the delta T, which tells us, according to the equation, that that is equal to the delta TP, 2.6 times 10 to the minus eighth seconds. And then this is divided by this rather cumbersome term here. It's a giant square root. You have one minus the speed squared. Now, let's remember that the speed was 0.98C. So what you want to do is open up a parentheses and put 0.98C inside of those parentheses close them off, and then square the entire quantity. And then this is going to be divided by c squared. And it turns out there's a nice little shortcut here that's going to help us calculate this delta t. And it involves looking carefully at that number in the parentheses, the 0.98c. Because what we're going to do is we're going to square that. We're going to square the 0.98, but we're also going to square the c. When you square 0.98 on a calculator, of course, you get 0.9604. And then when you square c, you get c squared. And then this is all divided by c squared. And what's really nice here is that the c squareds are going to end up canceling each other out. So that makes the calculation much easier. And then at this point, you could probably type the rest of it into your calculator. And when you do so, you should get a delta t of 1.31 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds. So this would be the time interval as measured by the person back on Earth who is, again, moving with respect to the clock. We go and look at part B, and it asks us to find the average distance that the pi meson travels before decaying. So it wants a distance. But, and I almost scooted ahead too quickly, as measured by an observer on Earth. That is actually extremely important because that's telling us which time interval we should be using for this calculation as measured by an observer on Earth. Well, we just figured out the time interval measured by a person or an observer back on Earth, so we should be using that time interval. We know from Physics 101 that the distance traveled is basically equal to the speed multiplied by the time interval. And again, we're going to be using delta t because that is the time interval measured by an observer on Earth. So here we have D, the speed of the pi meson was the 0.98 C. Now for C, you actually want to go ahead now and plug in 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That is the constant speed of light multiplied by this time interval. Let's go ahead and punch that into our calculators. 
And when you do so, you should get a distance of approximately 38 meters. So that would be the correct answer to part B. Finally, to part C, we need to calculate a distance again, but this time we're calculating the distance if time dilation did not occur. So what that means is that the time interval as measured by the pi meson would be the same time interval as measured by an observer on Earth. This is not a realistic situation, but the question is nevertheless asking us for us. So we're gonna go ahead and this time use the unchanged time interval. So we'll just use the original time interval given by the question. We're still calculating the distance, so we're still gonna take the speed of light, well, 98% of the speed of light, that is, and then multiply it by that time interval as measured by the pi meson. And when we do so, we get a distance of approximately 7.6 meters. So this would be the distance if time dilation did not occur, and that is the correct answer to part C.